My name is Bani Dugal, the Baha'i International Community's Principal Representative to the United Nations. On 29th of October, <clears throat> we were scheduled to have a launch of a report that uh, the Baha'i International Community has prepared on the situation of the Baha'is in Semnan. Semnan is about 200 kilometers east of Tehran with a population of about 125,000 people, along with several hundred Baha'is from every walk of life. Despite their small number, the Baha'is of Semnan have faced increasing arrests, long imprisonments, arson, vandalism, restriction on their businesses, discrimination in higher education, assaults on school children, and hate speech from the pulpit and other parts of uh, the establishment in Iran. Now, the reason why the Baha'i International Community decided to focus on uh, the situation in Semnan is that Semnan symbolizes the microcosm of the nation, of the Iran, and of the Baha'i community in Iran, and uh, the persecution that they have long suffered for more than three decades now from a community of several hundred, at least 34 Baha'is have been arrested since 2005. Half are in prison or awaiting trial or sentencing. And recent sentences have been particularly harsh, up to six, six years uh, in prison. And uh, so the reason why we decided to have this report was to highlight how in this small, uh, in one city, we can see the, the plan that the Islamic Republic has for um, uh, blocking the progress of the entire Baha'i community with uh, a view to ultimately um, exterminate the Baha'is in the country. Unfortunately, you know, this is what is happening to uh, all the Baha'is, you know, as far as persecution in Iran uh, in past 30 years. And recently, the persecutions of the Baha'is in Semnan, including my family, uh, was uh, intensified. And those are the ones that uh, Munir and I, we are here uh, because we are worried about our family and we wanted to share uh, with you and to see we are concerned. And one of the, the our worry uh, that it comes that we wanted to share is our um, family, uh, my brothers, sisters, and one of my uncle uh, who lives in Semnan, um, they're Baha'is. And because of the relationship to my other maternal uncle, Mr. Jamaluddin Khanjani, who was a member of one of the seven members of a uh, committee overseeing the Baha'i affairs uh, in Iran, uh, and now he's in prison, uh, the persecution of our family has intensified. What they've done in the past few years, uh, in a suburb of Semnan, uh, we own uh, uh, properties that has been in the family close to 200 years uh, before the start of the Baha'i faith. And this has been uh, a property that I, our family done uh, farming, agriculture, and pr pl plus raising lambs and sheep. And that has been how the business has been for past uh, a few generation. What has been happening our family uh, over close to 20 years ago uh, because they own all a lot of them they own a small piece of a parcel they agreed to put all their parcel together and to form uh, a co corporation agriculture and uh, basically um, cattle farms in a sense. So by doing that without with their own money without without the help of uh, governments, uh, they put their money together and started this project. First they did, uh, they brought electricity to this property uh, to do agriculture and then they got the permission from the water authority of province of Semnon. Uh, they uh, put in two wells to be used for um, irrigations and then from the na natural resources of uh, natural resource development of province of Semnon uh, they got the permission uh, to build uh, a kind of storage for water during the winter 
so that water can be used for irrigation. Is, for is this culture. unusual? Is this, a, is this a better than average development, if you see what I mean, or is this typical development? I mean, do you say this is more advanced development? Yeah, this was the only, as far as I know, my family say this is a unique uh, project. I think my family pursued it. Don't, I don't know another project similar like this in Semnan, but this was very unique. and. Uh, as, as far as I know, at this point, this is one of the biggest orchard uh, in province of Semnan uh, with the state-of-the-art uh, uh, techniques they've been using and they developed this project. One of its a kind, one of a kind. Suddenly, f starting five years ago, for, or close to five years ago, uh, this, they started actually destruction of this project. Initially, it started by cutting off the electricity, and then now you say they who is they? I mean the government the government you know without any uh, justification uh, they started demolishing uh, the water uh, storage it was demolished and then that's what that way it started you know this whole thing happened and plus without any explanation the lease for that 30-year uh, lease for uh, the property that my uncle Najat Khanjani had that was without any explanation and that was uh, uh, taken away from that. From all this beautiful project you described, how much is functioning now? How how destroyed have they? How much destruction have they accomplished? Right now, the electricity has been cut off. Uh, the water storage has been over sixty million liter of water that was destroyed, and the the lease for the property for taking care of the lamb and sheep, that's been taken away. And right now the way it looks in is at the, at the verge of total destruction because everything that you need to maintain these orchards and the agriculture has been, is, uh, has been taken away at this point. And how many people did this support? Like how many people because of this attack have lost their income or their, their means of support? You see this, uh, this project has been one source of income for our family. As I said in the beginning, close to 70 peoples, they participated in this project. This kind of development was uh, the livelihood of uh, quite few members of the families and plus quite a number of employees, they were working. So, as I said, you know, close to 70 people participated in these projects. And they're all Baha'is? They're all Baha'is, yes. And are those 70 now without income or mostly without income, doing other things? You know, right now, uh, all of them is uh, one source of income they had has been cut off, and even in this case, uh, uh, there were some. I mean, they even they wanted to pursue other businesses, other work, is is very challenging, is very difficult in the province of Semnan. Some of the things that come out from these reports are the fact that um, it is really. Um, indiscriminately hitting at all the Baha'is who are in, in Semnan. And it is really a plan that is devised to uh, completely um, force the Baha'is uh, of Semnan to want to leave that town and possibly to want to leave Iran, which we believe is one of the goals um, that the Iranian uh, government is now trying to achieve. We just wanted to bring this one, I guess, you know, uh, Munir and I, we are here, we just not, uh, it's not just our family who are mm -hmm. suffering. It's not just our family who have been persecuted. There are uh, more Baha'is, more Baha'i families in Semnan and other parts of Iran. They have the same stories and different type of persecution they're going through. From a student at a young age when he goes to primary school, secondary school, or the young uh, individual one of one to attend universities deprived, or the business license in the different cities or different towns has been, without any reason, has been taken away, or the business has been shut down, so other cities, other places, and cemetery has been destroyed in other localities. I left Iran not because I wanted to leave Iran. I left Iran in terror and fear, and I didn't want to leave Iran because I love Iran and all the family and love, support, kindness, happiness that I knew was in Iran. So just um, 
it is very difficult to hear after so many years that we have we have been hoping and praying that things will settle and um, that this things have gotten worse even so I left in a state of terror and not wanting to and hoping and hoped and prayed that I would return to Iran soon not 30 years later sitting here talking about how worse things have gotten so throughout Iran, the school authorities have frequently harassed, mistreated, or insulted Baha'i school children. In Semnan, the incidents include class lectures by clergy that denigrate the Baha'i faith, failure to register Baha'is for school, segregation of Baha'is from other students. And uh, this uh, sort of um, uh, treatment of school children starts at, in kindergarten or even preschool and goes all the way up to uh, high school and then ultimately Baha'is are banned from university. So throughout Iran Baha'i youth have been denied access to higher education and in Semnan at least five Baha'is have been dismissed or expelled from universities. My communication with my uh, family, my nephew, which is, is uh, 13, 14 years of age, uh, I've been informed that the Baha'i children, they can just attend one or two schools in Semnan. Oh, really? Out of the whole city, out of the how many schools in the yeah. city? They've been concentrated in one or two schools, so they don't have the option to attend, to enroll in different type of schools. And that is what has been, I've been told uh, recently, and as far as the children attending schools. How many different schools are there? How many, what are the? I don't know the total number of schools. Uh, Semnan is, is a large like this city, pri but quite a and few. Primary middle school. I mean, primary middle school, yeah. but the Baha'is have been concentrated in mm -hmm. one or two schools. They can enroll their and children. And do the teachers <clears throat> say things against them in the class? I know in other cities, it's yes. the religion mm -hmm. teachers that often attack mm -hmm. the Baha'is in the open classroom. Yeah, there have been incidents in Semnan in the in past few years, within four years, they had incidents that, you know, children were um, harassed, insulted, mm -hmm. and belittled in the front of other students just because just of the belief in the Baha'i faith. Mm -hmm. We had incidents in Semnon. And encouraged by the yeah. teachers not to speak with the Baha'i oh. children. Even in one instance, one of the teachers was given permission to, to the non-Baha'i children to hit or assault the Baha'i children. So it's even to that point. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is um, one evidence of, of uh, how that document of 1991, uh, the Baha'i Question uh, document, which was uh, which states uh, the Islamic Republic's policy against Baha'is, is um, evident in its um, you know in in its implications and how it's being implemented. In fact. Um, the very uh, attitude change from uh, the, the killing and the, uh, throwing the prison and so forth, especially adult population, moving to young women who taste the hand of her child, two years of four years of child, uh, and uh, going to prison because her uh, this was you know declared that uh, she has to be uh, going in prison for two or three or four years. An innocent woman, the woman who she she just got pregnant or has been pregnant for some time, she said that this is your death sentence, this is your uh, sentence to go to the prison because of your religion or whatever they want to accuse her, and she goes to the prison. Do they realize that that? It features that baby of the future. What kind of um, impact the judgment of the world will be about that woman for the Islam and for the fanatics? Or when they go and attract, uh, attack, for example, with cars and uh, uh, whatever other means, the, the graves of these Baha'is who have been either killed or died and so forth, and they just smashing through that as though it's just rubbish. Do they realize that this was exactly opposite of the vision of Muhammad himself and Islam, which was really peace in, in the universe? Do they realize that if they really this penetrate in their mind, they, they can think about it, that what they are doing, they are really destroying Islam, not by faith. Since 2007, we have seen at least 27 Baha'i-owned businesses that have been closed by the authorities, depriving some 110 families of their main livelihood. In 2009, for example, the Chamber of Commerce and 39 trade unions decided to prohibit new or renewed licenses 
for Baha'i businesses in Semnan, and this is in that one city alone. One of my brother, which is a shareholder of the company, uh, he had a factory uh, in Semnan, uh, lens grinding factory, and it was in month of May, end of May, uh, without any reason, explanation by uh, the local governments of Semnan, uh, it was uh, shut down and it was closed. So you believe this is com solely because they're Baha'is? Exactly. Why do you believe that? Because the reason is that, that you know, uh, my family's, you know, part of the people, you know, in, the, in this company, when they went back to different authorities, uh, the explanation we are getting right now, uh, local people, directly or indirectly, as my family told me, they're sympathizing with us. And they're saying this instruction coming from the top. And uh, they say, you know, your company, the way it's been formed, is legal. We don't see any problems because all the permits was issued from the same uh, local authorities, the pro, uh, from province authority, but they don't see any problem. They said, you know, this instruction from the top. And then the top, which meaning top the you know, national, the, uh, national, yeah, it could be uh, uh, all these things that we found out, we uh, our uh, family communicate to, uh, to us is coming from uh, the intelligence office, central intelligence office or the intelligence office of Semnam. And the local government, when we go, they say, you know, the, the instruction is coming from the top. At the heart of the campaign in Semnan has been the effort to rouse hatred towards Baha'is among the local population. Anti-Baha'i seminars, the distribution of anti-Baha'i pamphlets, broadcasting of anti-Baha'i rhetoric at Friday sermons in Semnan uh, in the mosques have created an atmosphere of suspicion and animosity. Now, Semnan is significant for the depth and breadth uh, an intensity of attacks in a small area which has been sustained over a number of years. The widespread and coordinated nature of the attacks on Baha'is in Semnan could only be accomplished with government encouragement and permission. My brother's factory was shut down. That uh, instruction came from intelligence office. Uh -huh. So the same is with that. And they are, they are basically in Semnan, including my family, what they're doing right now is just uh, focusing on the Baha'i to cut all the businesses they have, to put them under economic pressure. So with this kind of uh, activities happening, it's just solely for the Baha'is. You see, all the Baha'is, they are persecuted this way. It's not just our business, which is agriculture, is being affected. And we see that uh, close to uh, 27 businesses in Semnan is being shut down uh, and then uh, the business licenses is not being renewed so all the businesses the Baha'is in that community they've been affected affected basically the, their intention is just totally uh, destruction of the Baha'i community and that is what has been done solely because they're Baha'i. The recent intensification indicates a new level of activity to enforce more strongly the government's long-established policy of discrimination against the Baha'is. As Baha'is, we're not politicians. We're not involved in politics. We're involved in human service and community development to help humankind, not just our family. So, um, however, we speak of, of this based on facts. And it's very difficult for um, people who live in the, in the West to understand what is going on in Iran and the oppression and why is just a group of religious people are being persecuted but again just no support from the government no arrest no protection um, for citizens who are um, you know self-sufficient and not only are supporting themselves but are providing you know opportunities for the community there's no support but then there's destruction where else is it coming from? Why is there, in your view, happening this intensification in Semnon now? What is the government trying to do to the Baha'is there? In my point of view, because many of these Baha'is who moved from Sangsar to Semnon, who were already persecuted, uh, and came and organized a community of people who were 
doing just service to humanity and uh, like any other population and in the same time nothing could break their faith and their determination uh, 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 and not giving up rather than recanting and so forth. This aggravated the clergy and uh, the Muslim, uh, some of the Muslim fanatics that these people, if they set an example for the rest of the countries, the whole countries will be standing up with determination very strong. So in my feeling, my feeling is that this was in a way to break down their confidence their belief, their faith, and set an example for the rest of the countries. Of course, there have been a lot of atrocities and violence against the Baha'is uh, and discriminations in every level, in Shiraz, in Tehran, in Isfahan, in many, many cities in the, in the north. And But it, this, to me, is a psychological approach to something that by killing they could not bring some results. Killing raised the voice of the world, the press all around the world, United Nations, uh, Human Rights Commission, they felt that, well, that didn't work out. So in a very low key, they want to cut and to kill, if it is possible. Why to the Baha'is of Semnan? Their resilience, their steadfastness has been exemplary. So much so the government is now alarmed that if this, this kind of resilience is going to continue, then the rest of the country is going to stand up and they will be in trouble. The situation, as um, I mentioned earlier, in Semnan offers a case study for how a government can systematically oppress a people, a religious minority, in all aspects, the economic, social and educational aspects of their lives. It represents a microcosm of what is happening to Iranian Baha'is nationwide. And it is for that reason that the Baha'i International Community decided to prepare this report. We have uh, this launch now and this information being provided to you all online.